Well, welcome one and all to the Bike Racing Without Mercy training vlog. Last week, you may remember, we explored Chris Froome's extreme Giro d'Italia 2018 weight loss strategy. In order to get him down to a very spelt 68.5 kilograms in time for the final week and the imposing geology. This week, we're exploring what he did when he hit the mountains. How the nutrition changed, how his energy expenditure changed. And we're focusing in on stage 19 of the Giro d'Italia 2018, the Finestra. So today's race is a little jaunt around the Eva Pretzel. I always find that super emotional, especially come the final hour. So stage 19 of the Giro d'Italia was the backdrop for one of the greatest Grand Tour cycling performances of all time. Because Chris Froome and Team Sky executed on a perfect nutrition and race tactic strategy. Leading Chris Froome through the first half of the race and the first half of the Finestra climb at an infernal pace, shelling out other GC riders' domestiques to enable him to break away halfway up the Finestra and TT his way to staying away. 80 kilometers to a summit finish, thereby delivering one of the most incredible Grand Tour Grand Heists in history, i.e. his very own Italian job. And most definitely, he brought home the goods to the Team Sky bus that night. So today, I'm exploring Chris's nutrition strategy to fuel him for that epic, epic feat of athletic excellence. Plus his energy expenditure, hence a race on Eber Pretzel right now. I'm gonna take you through the dinner he ate last night, calories and macronutrients, his gargantuan breakfast this morning, all the in race, nutrition, the SIS are lined up, as you can see, and his post-ride recovery. Needless to say, carbohydrates, many, many, many carbohydrates are on my mind. So let's wind back in time to yesterday to check out the Carb Fest. Well, Grand Tour of Italy, the Giro may well be, but Italian cuisine was not on the Team Sky menu. Well, certainly not back in 2018. So Chris Froome and the rest of the team, well, they eschewed all of the pasta. They TT passed loads and loads of pasta. However, they went long on the bends. Very long indeed. They also went long on the science. Team Sky does love its marginal gains and its science. And it was science for recovery, fun for recovery, and of course, rounding off the recovery with a little bit more science. Well, this is just the tip of a carbohydrate iceberg because Behold. Well, I'm proud to present, if not a little bit intimidated, all of the carbohydrates. Well, actually, there are a couple of other macronutrients in here, a little bit of protein and a tiniest bit of fat, as you'll see. So let's call it nutrition. All the nutrition that Chris Froome consumed over the course of 24 hours in order to blow the bloody doors off his own Italian job. And just look at it. Stacking it up right here, starting tonight with dinner. And you can see it ain't small. And I'm not a big lad, so the level of concern is starting to rise. Well, as for last week, I assumed that the supper that Chris ate at the end of stage 19, the Finestra, was very similar to the one he ate the night before in order to fuel him through that stage. So on the deck right now, we have 189 grams of carbs, most of it from rice here but also 30 grams of protein and 12 grams of fat from the salmon. So a nice little treat, an upgrade on the tuna from last week. Chris had chicken. And the birch and muesli I've subbed in instead of the yellow gum that Chris has, because we are civilized here after all. 
And now it's time for man versus birch and muesli. And I grant you, it doesn't have quite the same ring to it as man versus 100 ounce steak or man versus six pound novelty burrito, but it does feel like a pretty big food challenge to me on the back of 150 grams worth of carbs from the rice and that salmon. So here we go. It's a bit like, I guess, the climb to the radio tower. You don't really want to do it, but may as well give it your best. Now time to retreat to the sofa and regroup, ready for breakfast tomorrow. So today I'm riding with Lee Baxter, Eric Lee from Don't Get Drop Cycling, Paul Neal and William Pridden. Good luck to you all. I've been dropped by Lee already. I'll claw him back. Riding within myself, head lab rack style here. There's a long way to go. Not least of which, the radio tower, volcano climb, the jungle, and out the Zwift. Here's Lee now. What a gent. He's waited up for me. Radio tower. You gotta love it. Bonus climb. Now for the first climb, about an hour, Chris Froom averaged 320 watts. I can't even do that for five minutes on a race this size. That was his first time, the gentle one. Finestra was north of 400. Well, anyone who watches the channel regularly will know that indoors are out. My descending is, shall we say, nascent. So once again, good old Lee has had to wait up a little bit for me because I got dropped on the descent. Chris Froome, I am not. No aero tuck in real life. And to be honest, I prefer to pedal in Zwift. I hate having to reboot the diesel engine having stopped. Well, we're coming out of the jungle, thankfully, and we've been taking our turns on the front. I know Chris Froome was in the wheels up until 80 kilometers to go, but he's a gentleman. And so am I. It'd be rude not to take a pull on the front. Feeling good. So let's check out breakfast this morning. Time for the pre-race weigh-in. And so I managed to hold off nearly all of the weight loss from Chris Froome's extreme Giro diet. Time to hit the kitchen. And just like that, the breakfast of a champion is served. Here's what 190 grams of carbohydrates and 30 grams of protein looks like. 250 grams of rice, a couple of these pancakes, two tablespoons of jam, a tablespoon of honey in the green tea. And for a treat this week, Chris has allowed himself an additional 100 milliliters to the orange juice. Cheers. I should also confirm that the calorie count for this breakfast is a thousand, exactly in line with that that Chris had ahead of the Finestra. If I'd gone with the 400 grams of rice and all the pancakes and extra um, condiments, I'd have gone way over the thousand. So I stuck to calories rather than sort of the notes. Bon appetit. Now I am actually looking forward to these. It's been a while since I've had a pancake. Time for the jam. The bon and more. The sweet relief of a nice bit of jam on the back of all those starchy carbs. I can only imagine how luxurious that felt to Chris after his nine day kind of crash diet during the middle of the Giro, where it was just plain rice, omelets and boring bits of protein. Now time for a tablespoon of honey in my green tea. Yeah, okay, that's all right, that's all right. I never mixed in the honey to the tea. Looking forward to finishing this off. It was amazing last week. Now, Chris said he started the Finestra stage full to bursting, and I can definitely empathize with that. What with the massive dinner last night and this huge, huge breakfast. Well, my glycogen stores have been topped up during the sleep. All this breakfast is sitting there 
in the tummy, getting very quickly broken down because it is fast digesting starchy carbs and sugars. They're gonna get into the bloodstream, provide energy and top up glycogen stores and hopefully propel me to a decent race. But Chris needed to be full to bursting because he had three and a half minutes of arrears to take down versus Simon Yates and Tom Demoulin. So we're on the Volcano KOM. It's a nice shallow gradient. So able to stay seated for most of it. And also, you do get a good draft benefit. So looking to profit from that. I'll take my goes in the front as well. Aiming to sustain 270 to 300 watts. It's only about a seven minute climb. Then it'll be time to fuel back up. So probably a good time to segue into the in-race nutrition. The veritable arsenal of SIS plus the masterful secret ingredient from Team Sky in my bottle. Well on the deck is 468 grams of fast digesting carbohydrates. Now each of these gels has 22 grams of maltodextrin and that's quickly absorbed by the body and converted into energy, perfect during a long race on the Uber pretzel. Now these two also have 75 milligrams of caffeine in them and I'll use them kind of strategically to give me a little bit of a boost when I need it, probably at the bottom of Alp de Zwift. Moving on to the beta fuel, aka rocket fuel, each of these bad boys contains 80 grams of carbs by of maltodextrin and fructose. And the great thing about the beta fuel is you stick it in your bottle and you drink it when it's harder to get at and utilize the gels, i.e. on the climb. Feeling good so far. Definitely all those carbs are making a difference. Coming towards the summit of the Volcano KOM. Feeling good, definitely time to fuel up shortly. What a little band of five has been working well together. Orange is on my mind. This is gonna be my fifth gel. Remember I had five throughout the whole of last week's um, adventure. Plus a couple of rice cakes. Feeling good, and definitely the power is higher, the well-being is better. Um, I'm really focusing on nice pedaling technique, decent cadence, and pampering myself on the flat. Quite a lot of flat, to be honest. It does get a bit boring on the Uber pretzel before we hit the climbs. But we're on Tempest Fugit flat, and I've got to say I really hate this part of the Uber pretzel. It's about an hour and a bit of just, well, zone two. But it, you can actually run out of energy quite easily here without realizing it. It feels easy and all of a sudden it doesn't. So I'm staying ahead of the game on the carbohydrate intake here, a vanilla, just to break up all of the fruit. Anyway, salut. Well, I guess it's salut, I don't know. Oh, vanilla is good. Still feeling good, but a long way to go. We're in the danger hour now, nicely into it. So we've got to keep fueling. Back on the lemon and lime. Very refreshing, a bit more water. Just coming to the Watopia, small KOM in the reverse direction. Time now for 75 milligrams of caffeine and a few more carbohydrates, Coca-Cola flavor. That really is just like a flat Coke. Now this is where I sometimes really struggle as we get back onto the flat. And in the past, I've under eaten. So intrigued to see how this on 
nutrition strategy serves me. Now I'm gonna start making my way as well through the rocket fuel. Cheers. Yeah, it tastes good, that. You can taste the 80 grams of carbohydrate. Getting started to fill it now. Time for another gel. Time for another gel, really flagging here. We're on the run in now to out the Zwift. Definitely time to take on another gel because we're going to be on the beta fuel on the climb. Number 12. I'll have this on the descent to out the Zwift and the rest of the beta fuel on the way up. Yeah, it's going to be a tough old climb, but feeling okay. Thirteen or twelve, eh? Moment of lapsed concentration. Lee came storming back past, along with Mr. Dyson, and nearly dropped me. I had to invest a few watts to get back on just ahead of the descent. Getting dropped on the flat and ahead of the descent is my little party trick. So, last gel, 75 milligrams of caffeine. Now it's just me, the Alp, and the Beta Fuel. I'll ride my own pace, hoping to get as close to four watts a kilogram as possible. Just coming to the Alp, the Zwift KOM, aiming for four watts a kilogram, that's gonna be aspirational. This. Here's my Finestra. It goes without saying, 400 watts ain't on the cards. But let's see what I got. Gonna gradually ramp the power, aim for a negative split. It's gonna be a long hour climb. All right, lower tempo at the moment, about 230 watts average. Struggling. Three hours 37, coming in a bit of a dark place. Last of the beta fuel. I'm not gonna manage the negative split. I'm gonna be slower in the second half. Last corner, I'll help in. This has been emotional. Aiming for seventh place here. five watts a kilogram or four hours nine minutes the timeline yeah you can see just about managed tempo up the alp it was very much lower tempo probably about 230 watts average well i've changed into a slightly more comfortable pair of trainers and i think the word of the afternoon is going to be withered I mean, boy, oh boy, do I find those longer rides super, super difficult. I mean, I do not know how the guys and the girls of the pro peloton manage to string all that together day in, day out. It's not just the fitness. You need the constitution of an ox to take down all of the carbohydrates and the rice. I mean, the rice. Super happy, actually, with the ride. Really enjoyed riding with everybody in the group. More of that in a second. Four hours, 10 minutes is my best but I have had the benefit of a bit more draft up the Alp in the past. Um, average power 227 watts, really happy with that. Against a 63 kilogram correct weight, that's 3.6 watts a kilogram, and it was 235 normalized, 3.7 watts a kilogram. So that's really good for me personally. I only burned off 3,400 calories. That's about 2,900 less than Chris, because he was working on a different level of intensity. I can't replicate that. Therefore, I only had the one beta fuel, that saved me 80 carbs. Um, but as you can see, I did consume the rest. I think that's why I don't feel at all hungry right now. And the last thing I wanna do 
is take down all of Chris's post-ride nutrition because there's a hell of a lot of it and yeah you guessed it rice figures once again but the reason he takes it down is of course he's got a fuel for the next day um, and it's a great anabolic window immediately after exercise because you're depleted of all the glycogen and so the body is super receptive to all those carbs and Lee Baxter, Eric Lee, Paul Neal respect for your during a ride I consumed 388 grams of carbohydrate because I didn't take down the second beta fuel but all is well because that equates to just shy of 100 grams of carbs per hour and if I look at my weight pre-ride 63 and post-ride 62.9 that indicates the hydration and the carb consumption was pretty much on point so now time for Chris's post-ride recovery some of which I'm looking forward to for example the smoothie also looking forward to trying the SIS Rego Rapid Recovery because it's strawberry flavour and obviously the cherry looks very enticing as well but a couple of the ingredients are, well, shall we say, a little bit less enticing. The Haribo, not exactly my favourite, but here is where the level of concern is starting to rise because quite a lot of rice is going to be consumed with syrup. Rice and syrup, is that a thing? So starting with the SIS Rigo Cherry Juice, 14 grams of carbs. Looking forward to it. Oh, that's tart. Really like that. And now time for the Rego Rapid Recovery. Initial impressions. If it's strawberry, I just want it a little bit pinker. Time for full gas Rego Recovery. Here we go. Not bad. 23 grams of carbs, 20 grams of protein in there. Now on for the smoothie. Nice thick smoothie. 20 grams of protein. I subbed out the bananas frozen berries. I don't like bananas. I am actually a cyclist that doesn't like bananas, I confess. So this is just one of the rice, 250 grams. And even when I add on this, I'm only in a kind of 900 calorie range out of 2,340 that Chris consumed. I'm hoping to kind of boost it a little bit with the Haribo. And yes, I am going to eat them all together. So let's try the maple syrup on the rice. And it's a clever strategy this because it boosts the calorie content and it's probably relatively easy to eat. Here we go. Doesn't that look appetizing? Hmm, that's true. Rice and maple syrup is a thing. It's decent. It's better than dry, let's put it that way. Hmm, that's all right. Of course, what I really want is just one of these, Chris. Did nobody tell you about the MSI spice bun? <laughs> the last mouthful of the post ride nutrition is going down, and I have to admit defeat. It's been trialed by rice. I'm not going to get to that second packet. So I'm at about 1,000 calories from post ride nutrition, circa 200 carbs. And that pales into insignificance compared to Chris's 2,350 calories for his post ride. But his energy expenditure was a hell of a lot higher, and he had to go again and again the next day. So looking to the last 24 hours, I consumed 968 grams of carbs, 4,530 calories, and I burned off 3,352 calories on the bike and another 1,800 in the ordinary course of living. So I'm still at a bit of a caloric deficit over the last 24 hours. And that compares to Chris, who consumed 6,663 calories, and he burned off 6,200 um, on stage 19, and plus, Obviously he'd have had a deficit as well because he'd have burned off another 1900 or so in the ordinary course of living. Hmm. So if you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd be super grateful if you would. But thoroughly enjoyed this little comparison. Hope you did too.